AWS architectures. How would you connect two VPCs? VPCs can be connected using VPC peering. It is a way to connect two VPCs so that they can communicate privately using their internal IP addresses. Remember that it doesn't work like a network hub. It's more like creating point to point connections. It cannot be used to create a transitive connection between other VPCs. How would you connect multiple VPCs? This can be done using a transit gateway, which acts like a central hub that simplifies connecting multiple VPCs and on-premise networks. It centralizes connections, reducing complex configurations compared to VPC peering's point-to-point -point approach. How would you connect an on-premise network with AWS Cloud? AWS Direct Connect lets you establish a dedicated high bandwidth network connection between your on-premise network and AWS, bypassing the public internet. Site-to-site -site VPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel using IPsec to connect your on-premise network to your VPC in AWS. It allows controlled private communication between your resources over a secure tunnel. How can you trace requests in your microservices application deployed on AWS? Using AWS X-Ray, we can track requests as they flow through the application across Lambda functions and other microservices. This helps identify bottlenecks, visualize request flow, and debug issues. How would you migrate database from Oracle to RDS? AWS DMS or Database Migration Service facilitates migrating data from one database to another, be it within AWS or between your on-premise environment and AWS. How can you export a database to S3, both initially and then for incremental changes? AWS DMS handles both initial and ongoing exports to S3. It can initially do a full data export from database to S3 and then continuously replicate changes from database to S3, keeping it synchronized. How can you secure your web application on AWS against common web exploits? Using AWS WAF or Web Application Firewall, you can create a security layer for your web applications protecting them from malicious attacks like SQL injection and cross-site scripting. WAF lets you define rules to block suspicious traffic, allow legitimate requests, and monitor web traffic for security threats. How can you protect your web application on AWS from DDoS attacks? AWS Shield, a managed DDoS protection service, safeguards your applications on AWS from distributed denial of service attacks that aim to overwhelm them. It offers two tires, a standard free tire for basic protection and advanced paid tire for enhanced DDoS mitigation and response capabilities. How can you deliver static content faster to end users around the world? Using CloudFront, a content delivery network service, you can speed up delivery of your website and app content like images and videos by caching them in a global network of edge locations. Users then access the content from the closest edge location, reducing latency and improving load times. How can you enable internet access for EC2 instances in a private subnet in a VPC? We can use NAT Gateway for this, which allows instances in a private subnet to connect out to the internet, but prevents inbound connections from the internet reaching those instances. It acts like a translator, converting private IP addresses to a public IP for outbound traffic. How can you generate a trigger each time a tracked vehicle enters a specific geographic area? We could use Amazon Location Service, which lets us add location functionality to applications. It has features like geofencing, which define virtual boundaries or geofences. So any tracked vehicles that enters or leaves these geofences triggers geofence events, which we can use to send alerts, like notify the delivery personnel when nearing a stop or initiate other actions. A large company has deployed IoT devices around the world that captures real-time sensor data like temperature, humidity, etc. How can they efficiently ingest 
and store this high volume data on cloud which must be available for time based analysis the iot devices can send sensor data to aws iot core service over mqtt which is then filtered and routed using iot core rules and stored in a time stream database time stream is a fast scalable time series database which can efficiently store large streams of data points like sensor readings or application metrics with time stamps this facilitates data analysis of recent and historical data over time an e-commerce company hosts a web application in a us region how can they ensure that customers in europe and asia are able to access this web application without experiencing any lag here we could use aws global accelerator service which comes with static anycast ip addresses you configure your dns service to point to these ip addresses the global accelerator routes user traffic over the fast aws network to your application endpoint it's ideal for applications accessed by a geographically distributed audience normally when a user accesses an application on aws it goes over public internet until it reaches the destination regional endpoint this can be slow depending on network hops available bandwidth and so on however if a end user's request can travel through fast aws global network it can reach the application's endpoint in aws faster thereby delivering better performance aws global accelerator allows you to do exactly that therefore it is a service to improve availability and performance of internet applications how can you aggregate and view security status of your aws resources and trigger actions based on that we would use aws security hub service here it provides a central dashboard for security findings it collects findings from built in aws security services like guard duty inspector etc partner security tools and your own custom integrations the findings can be sent to cloudwatch events where event rules could be configured to trigger actions how can you establish asynchronous bidirectional messaging connection between clients and server web sockets with api gateway provides real time two way communication between web clients and back end services on aws this establishes a full duplex persistent connection allowing bidirectional data flow unlike traditional http requests api gateway routes incoming web sockets messages to appropriate back end services like lambda functions this setup is ideal for scenarios requiring live updates like chat apps or collaborative editing what makes amazon kinesis highly scalable and fast kinesis has a distributed architecture which allows it to distribute data processing workload across multiple resources the data stream is spread across multiple shards and each shard can be processed independently in parallel this capability enables kinesis to handle high data ingestion rates and process large volumes of data in real time let's examine this more closely partition keys are used to assign data records to shards therefore with an appropriate partition key strategy data can be distributed smartly across shards kinesis also provides ordering of data records within a shard data capacity of your stream is a function of number of shards kinesis has the ability to scale the number of shards dynamically each shard can support a certain level of throughput and by increasing the number of shards kinesis can scale up its processing capacity and therefore handle higher data ingestion rates this elastic scaling ensures that kinesis can maintain high speed processing with increased workloads what is the typical structure of a ci cd pipeline in aws a typical ci cd pipeline uses a combination of services to streamline the development and release process developer commits code to code commit code build automatically triggers a build process compiles your code runs tests and produces deployment ready packages code deployed takes over deploying the build packages to your chosen target for running your application how would you implement a microservices architecture in aws here's an example the account service inventory service and order service are implemented as microservices via lambda functions each service has its own data storage api gateway routes incoming requests to these services 
and here's a variation of the same where microservices are deployed in containers managed by AWS Fargate. How can you handle multi-protocol traffic using load balancers in AWS? This is an example of handling multi-protocol traffic using network and application load balancers. The network load balancer has two listeners, TCP on port 80 and UDP on port 53. The TCP listener is configured to forward traffic to an application load balancer target group, while the UDP listener is configured to forward UDP traffic to another target group, which has instances that will accept UDP traffic. This configuration works well for applications that use multi-protocol connections, such as media services using HTTP for signaling and RTP for streaming content. An e-commerce company receives massive amounts of raw data in the form of CSV files from its warehouses around the world via FTP every day. The company wants to provide its business analysts an easy way to analyze this data using ad hoc SQL queries. How would you design this? Let's look at the architecture for this use case. We have a data lake with two buckets, raw and processed. Incoming raw CSV files are saved in S3 bucket raw, while clean files are stored in processed bucket. A glue crawler crawls the raw and processed data buckets to create metadata tables in glue data catalog. A glue job cleans and transforms the raw data to a storage and query efficient format like Parquet and saves it in the processed bucket. Analysts can now run ad hoc queries using Athena against the data in the processed bucket.